speech on June the 14th. This gesture has a symbolic value too, political as well as military. For him, the only legitimate France is that which, like himself, refuses to accept defeat. Montgomery, who marks time in front of Caen for three weeks, decides on June the 26th to launch a big offensive, Operation Epsom. But the weather is overcast and the Allied planes are unable to take off to support the advance of the Sherman tanks. Five armoured SS divisions are waiting for the British attack. They are equipped with Tiger 48-ton tanks, armed with the famous 88-gun. Tigers savage the Allied tanks. One single crew destroys 16 Shermans in one hour. Operation Epsom is halted in its tracks. The young recruits, turned into fanatics by Hitler, can still laugh. But the weather is clearing. Allied planes are airborne. They attack the aerodrome of Kapike in the suburbs of Khan, which is held by the 12th SS Panzer Division. Rocket-firing typhoons pulverize the German position. Montgomery wants to make an end and decides to wipe out the German defences. On July the 7th, he loses 467 heavy bombers on Kahn before attacking the town from the front. On July the 8th, a month after the landing, Canadian tanks rumble into the town. After 10 days of fighting in the streets, the British achieved the capture of Khan. Montgomery, criticized from London for the slowness of his advance, wants to push on at once on the road to Paris. He inaugurates Operation Goodwood of July the 18th with a formidable bombardment of the steelworks of Colombelle to the north of the Orne, where the Germans are entrenched. The Cromwell tanks set themselves in motion at 5.30 in the morning on July the 18th. The Tigers, having been knocked out by the bombardment, the British divisions follow the railway line from Cagny and advance freely onto the plain. Unexpectedly, they're shattered by the anti-aircraft batteries of the German 88mm cannons. The Germans use new anti-tank weapons like the guided Goliaths and the rocket launchers, imitations of Stalin's weapons.
more than a hundred British tanks are destroyed. Operation Goodwood is halted. In the West, General Bradley's Americans, whose objective is San Lo, are also held up. It's impossible to press forward in this maze of hedgerows where there are snipers and paratroops and SS units of the German 7th Army. Only the little Piper Cubs, the eyes of the artillery, can help to clean up the area, one hedgerow after another. Even the tanks are caught up in the tent. Twelve divisions take 17 days to advance six miles. An American handyman, Sergeant Cullen, then invents a new monster, the rhinoceros. Using Rommel's iron stakes from the beach defences, he prepares spurs which are welded to the front of the tanks. Thanks to him, the armoured troops break free of the thicket and go forward again. On July the 18th, the Americans at last seize San Lo. The first jeep to enter the town carries a coffin on its foot, draped with the stars and stripes. It's the body of Major Howie. He had sworn to be the first to enter San Lo. His men have respected his wish. General Hodge's tanks have broken through. Patton's army sweeps across the breach and the advance of the armies through the liberated towns begins to take on an air of triumph. Meanwhile, Hitler Proudly holding out his bandaged hand is smiling. Why the bandage? On July the 20th, he miraculously escaped from an assassination attempt. In the command post at Rastenburg, Colonel von Stauffenberg, chief of the plotters, had put a bomb under the heavy conference table. Its very thickness saved the Fuhrer's life. Hitler's faithful supporters congratulate him. It's truly a miracle. God is with me, the Fuhrer declares on the radio. On July the 17th, Rommel, seriously wounded by Allied planes, is replaced by Marshal von Kluger. For the Germans, the situation is becoming very dangerous. They have no defence to offer against Patton's army, which spreads through Brittany. On the other flank, Montgomery tries to reach Falaise from Caen. An encirclement seems to be the Allied plan. Five Panzer divisions travel all night to avoid air attacks and hope to surprise the American forces. But at daybreak, they are spotted by 10 squadrons of British Typhoon fighters armed with rockets. The result is catastrophic for the German high command. and 63 German tanks are destroyed. The Panzer SS are crippled. For the first time in military history, a powerful ground offensive has been stopped by planes alone. On the Normandy beaches, Allied reinforcements continue to flow in. On the 1st of August, the French 2nd Armoured Division lands at Utah Beach. Three years after General Leclerc, leaving Africa, had sworn not to lay down arms until the French flag is flying over Paris and Strasbourg. <laughs> 